You probably imagine Mount Everest as a pristine mountain landscape with a spectacular view in every direction. But the grim truth is, the place is absolutely lousy with corpses. That's because once an unfortunate climber's body is frozen, it attaches to the hillside permanently. And thanks to some eye-catching footwear, one such body even became a famous landmark. So, today we're looking at the tragic story of Green Boots, the frozen body on Mount Everest that hikers use as a checkpoint. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel. After that, leave a comment and let us know what other macabre topics you want to hear about. Okay, do not lose sight of your Sherpa, because we are about to summit some weird history. Rising above the Himalaya mountain range, directly on the border between China and Nepal, the summit that reaches over 29,000 feet above sea level is Mount Everest. First successfully climbed by Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay in 1953, the world's tallest mountain has long been a destination for mountaineers looking to test themselves and prove their skill. The thing is, surviving Everest takes a lot of skill and more than a bit of luck. Many who attempted the climb have proved deficient in one or both areas, and as a result, never came back. Um, because they died, in case that wasn't clear. In the past century alone, somewhere in the neighborhood of 330 climbers met their maker on the way to Everest Summit, succumbing to various dangers including hypothermia, exhaustion, lack of oxygen, falls, and avalanches, among other perils. And as a reporter from the BBC once said, when Everest takes a life, it also keeps it. Indeed, the number of bodies on Everest grows every year from the climbers who lose their lives on its slopes. One of Everest's most famous non-living residents is known as Green Boots, thanks to, as we are sure you've already guessed, his Green Boots. Until he moved in 2014, he resided at a particular location on the mountain where most hikers had to pass. And as a result, Green Boots became one of the landmarks for those heading up the slopes. Although it's not known exactly when climbers started to refer to the body as Green Boots, we do know his first known video image was taken in May of 1996 by mountain climber and filmmaker Matt Dickinson. That footage was used in a documentary called Summit Fever, a film that asserted the dead climber was from Nepal. Despite this claim, a consensus would eventually emerge that Green Boots was actually an Indian climber who died in the 1996 Everest disaster. That man is believed to most likely be Head Constable Sevang Paljur of the Indo-Tibetan Border Police, part of the first Indian ascent of Everest from its north side. It's also been suggested that it could be the body of another member of Paljur's Border Police climbing team, of which only one of four survived. In fact, the senior deputy leader of the team claimed in his reports that Paljur's body disappeared, and therefore Green Boots may actually be Lance Corporal Dorji Marup, Marup's body, if it is not Green Boots, never turned up. And while there's no way to know with absolute certainty to whom the body belongs, Bulger is the likely bet. Bulger hailed from the Ladakh region of the Indian state of Jammu and Kashmir. He actually grew up around the mountains and knew them well. After completing the 10th grade, he dropped out of school to help support his family joining the Indo-Tibetan Border Police, or ITBP. And it was with that ITBP that he made the fateful summit that cost him his life at just 28 years old. If you happened to be on Mount Everest on May 10th, 1996, you probably didn't make it far that day. A massive blizzard hit the mountain, taking the lives of eight climbers, including Sevang Paljur. By the time it was all over, the blizzard left behind the highest known single day body count in the history of Mount Everest. It was so bad that even some experienced guides perished while attempting to save groups of climbers. Several survivors have since written books about their ordeal. And Baltazar Kormacher directed the 2015 film dramatization Everest. Green Moots does not make an appearance. Before being removed in 2014, Everyone approaching Everest's summit from the north side had to pass by Paljur's body, located in a nook that had come to be called Green Boots Cave. According to mountaineer Noel Hanna, about 80% of the people who take the summit approach from the north side take the time to rest in Green Boots Cave. Because the little enclave provides some amount of shelter from the wind, 
it remains a popular spot for people to sit and catch their breath or even have a snack. Though it must have been pretty hard to stop at that spot and not notice the dead person sharing the cave with you, or his fantabulous boots. Now, because he lays so close to the trail, during certain levels of snowfall, Green Boots' legs actually extended into the path, and other climbers would have to step over him to pass by. Many climbers found it very disturbing to have to step over the corpse of a man who died while attempting the same climb, and some climbers considered it downright disrespectful. The dude did not plan on spending eternity as a signpost. Regardless of his emotional impact, his unmissable presence and distinctive lime green boots led to him becoming a grimly useful trail marker. He passed away at 8,500 meters to the summit, so when they saw him, climbers knew just how close they were. In May of 2006, 34-year-old British mountaineer David Sharp passed away in the same cave. Trekking alone, which is already extremely risky, Sharp was attempting something borderline irresponsible. He was trying to reach the summit without the use of oxygen tanks, a feat usually considered dangerous even to experienced Sherpas. Sharp had mountain climbing experience, but he wasn't up to the task he set for himself. It's unknown if he reached the summit that day, but either way, Sharp succumbed to hypothermia as up to 40 other trekkers passed him by in the area known as the Death Zone. This ominous phrase is used by mountaineers to designate the altitude at which point the air becomes too thin to support human life. And remember, Sharp was climbing without oxygen tanks. Guinness doesn't need your world record that bad, man. Disputed reports say many of the other climbers failed to offer him assistance, either believing him to be green boots or another hiker who had already perished. By the time people discovered Sharp needed help, it was much too late. At the request of his family, Sharp was moved a year later, which incidentally is no easy task. As much as the families of Mount Everest's victims want their loved ones back home, giving them a proper burial is rarely a possibility. Once the bodies become frozen, they pose several significant logistical challenges, becoming extremely difficult to move. Encased in ice, they not only stick to their locations, but are much heavier. And remember how high up some of those unfortunate climbers met their end, making it nearly impossible for any potential recovery team to stay conscious while lugging the weight of a popsicle corpse. It's akin to recovering a body from the bottom of the ocean. Getting a body down from Everest takes the work of multiple Sherpas, usually six to eight. And for the record, Sherpas do not work cheap. One mountaineer who inquired about removing green boots was told it would be in the area of around 70,000 American dollars. Like a wise clown once said, if you're good at something, never do it for free. That hefty price tag can be considered hazard pay because any recovery attempt is dangerous as hell. By merely ascending Everest to do the work, those Sherpas would be putting their own lives in danger, knowing full well that if they die up there, no one is going to be paying six to eight more Sherpas to get their body down. Given the expense and difficulty of bringing a corpse down off the mountain, many families opt for a respectful concealment of the bodies from any prying eyes along the trail. While nobody knows exactly how many bodies still reside on Mount Everest, the estimate clocks in around 280. You'd think the statistic would be bad for tourism, but apparently, having to walk a path literally littered with corpses of those who tried to walk the same path isn't that big of a deterrent, as around 800 people try to climb per year. We'll stick to our mildly inclined treadmill, thank you. According to the Himalayan database, most climbers expire either ascending or descending from the summit, with fewer perishing at base camp. And as one might expect, the records reveal that foreigners are far more likely to lose their lives near the top than experienced Sherpas. Those who perish on the mountain generally stay where they fell, and only a select few receive nicknames from passing climbers, probably because playing Name the Corpse isn't the most fun road trip game. In 2014, climbers on Everest reported that Green Boots was missing. In fact, reports said that many of the bodies once visible on the north side vanished. For example, an area known as the Rainbow Ridge, due to the colors of the clothes on all the exposed corpses, was almost completely cleaned up. Experts suspect the effort was undertaken by the Chinese Tibetan Mountaineering Association and the Chinese Mountaineering Association. Both are partially responsible for upkeep of the north side, but neither has admitted to the cleanup likely to avoid bad publicity. Beyond that, there's simply not enough evidence to say what exactly happened to these bodies. In 2017, reports of green boots sightings occurred, 
but were dismissed after other reports maintained that his body was covered out of respect and remains that way to this day. May his boots finally know peace. So what do you think? Have you ever dreamed of climbing Mount Everest? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from Our Weird History.